Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. This is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Uh, tonight we're going to do an episode that we haven't done in close to two years. I think you said like it, and it seems December to be. We're going to break it out of, a little differently, but yeah, yeah. So like a year and yeah. a half. Today we're going to talk so, about and, the best new off roaders and overlanders that you can not necessarily walk into a dealership and buy because the market is still the way the market is. Um, but the yeah, the best four by fours and wheeling vehicles that are out there. And the last time we did this was December of 21. So things have changed. And we also did... Really? We focused primarily on used back then. So we're going to break this out today. We're going to focus on new. And we'll record another episode and talk about used. Because everybody knows... (laughs) Has the used market changed? God, it's the wild, wild west out there. So, yeah. So... um, Chris, where do you want to start? Do you want to start at the low end or should we just go right to the cycle? I think we should start stuff? at the low end. That's, I mean, low end. more attainable. And to tease, we'll talk about the uh, Jeep 392 and Bronco Raptor later. I have spent time with both of them recently. But for the low end, and it's kind of comical because the low end of reasonable new vehicles to get into something with all-wheel drive and ground clearance where you can take it not just to you know the start of a hiking trail but actually like down a a trail that's a two out of ten or a three out of ten versus you know fire road Um, the options are interesting it's changed a lot over the last few years so we have Subaru Crosstrek, right? And so you, then, you're basically starting at like what thirty five thousand? No, no, no. Let's start lower. Let's start at twenty five. And for the listeners, Chris and I have uh, prepared exactly nothing for this. <laughs> so you think you think there are new vehicles available for twenty five thousand dollars? What does the Subaru Crosstrek start at? I don't know. <laughs> because okay. Sorry for every so twenty four nine nine five. There we go, right on the money. Um, the cross track <laughs> does unfortunately have a CVT, but it it does also have ground clearance. It has Subaru's symmetrical all wheel drive, and it's just a good car. So we're more in the overland category here. Obviously, this isn't right off road or low range kind of stuff. And it's the same thing with the Forester for 26 and change. You know, both have ground clearance that would, like, make a Jeep from 20 years ago cringe. And they're good and comfortable and safe, reliable cars. But it's, they're limited. Like, that's the catch. So in the 25 to 30 range, there's, (laughs) Chris always likes to joke that. I have one for you. Do well just to set the record straight. Chris always likes to joke that fifty is the new thirty-five. A hundred percent, yeah. That's so, not wrong. <laughs> so things and and thirty-five, the new the average price of a new car was over forty-eight the last time that it was clocked, um, and thirty-five is thus low. And if you go down to like twenty five, that's kind of the equivalent of what like a seventeen or sixteen thousand dollar car was ten years ago, seven years ago. <laughs> you know, like every two years ago, just two <laughs> yeah, two years ago basically. Um. So what what did you uh, what did you have at this so point? So my to my in, in this category would be the Ford Maverick. Can you get an all wheel drive Maverick? In the twenty-five to thirty range, no, is that just? I don't know, but drive? it starts at twenty-two. So okay, <laughs> with my yeah, zero and... research for this project, <laughs> yeah, same. Um, the no, and the thing that people always also forget is that the mentality of you need all-wheel drive or four-wheel four-wheel drive or you know, low range and and crazy low gearing to go off road is 
is false. Like there have been plenty of rear wheel drive or front wheel drive rally cars that have done fantastic off road and pre runners, you know, two wheel drive Baja pre runners. Like they don't have four driven wheels. So something like the Maverick, we always talk about like drive what you have, take what you have off road. It's going to go further than you would ever expect. Um, I think all of us do wish the Maverick was rear wheel drive by nature, but it's front wheel drive and get, even getting into a, a base all wheel drive Maverick is a great, great, great place to be. So um, a base all wheel drive Maverick is 23, four. That's crazy. That's it's an XL, but like 23, four. And it's probably got more nice shit in it than the $23,000 Colorado had in 2015. Which in 2015, the $23,000 Colorado is probably a rear wheel drive, extended cab, four cylinder, you know? So we've come a long way. And some of it is by proxy of technology. Like the Maverick, obviously, is an all-wheel drive system with a whole bunch of computer stuff that's telling it where and when to send power versus, you know, mechanical viscous couplings and whatnot that actually ship the power. Um, but it's, yeah, this the, the thing is, like, when we talk about going off-road, it's for most people with the exception of some, like we had Tim and Kelsey on and they, they off road for a living, you know, like they take their truck, their, their 200 series. And they literally use it to go deep into the woods to go mapping. Um, But for most of the population going off road is a hobby or a pastime. And that means that there's a heightened price associated with it. And that's kind of just the nature of things, you know, like that's like a a normal sneaker versus a specialized running sneaker. There's a price difference. And that's what we experience in the world of automobiles. So 20, the thirty five thousand dollars even is really tough price to deal with new now that inflation has kicked the economy in the balls for so lack of a better when, right and when we were down at twenty five it is super tight down there, and that's why like Maverick was a good one cross track yep. outback all of those I think are very uh apt selections when you go up to thirty five though Chevy Colorado starts to come into play. It's mm-hmm. not going to be the nice one, yep. but Chevy Colorado's there. Maverick is obviously still in play at the higher trim levels. Yep. Um, Nissan Frontier is listed as starting at thirty thousand five hundred dollars. Right. So, so let's cut it off. Let's do thirty to forty-five because that brings a whole different ball game with it. So you can get we, like an FX. We still have some options down low that you we haven't discussed How yet. How low? Uh, twenty seven nine would be a Hyundai Santa Cruz. Okay, would I? What's weird uh, is I've seen more Santa Cruz lately than Mavericks. Part of that is the Santa Cruz is a very unique vehicle. I'm definitely going to notice it, yes, but I've seen yes, more yes. of them lately than Mavericks. I uh, I don't think I've seen more than five Santa Cruz around here. So Ford Ranger still comes in at twenty eight. Okay. Tacomas are listed the base price at 30. Good fucking luck. Yeah. Those Tacomas um, don't exist. Those are special order fleet vehicles. Right. Well, and then we get into work levels of F 150s are supposed to be at 32. Market average supposedly is at 30. I'm sorry, third, starting at 33. Um, Silverado but 1500s, 32. I, for the sake of our conversation, though, like, Nobody, and by nobody, I don't mean blanket statement nobody. I mean the greater nobody is taking a two-wheel drive 
single cab long bed work trucks. I want to F-150 now. F-150 all like all over landing. That's yeah. I want to too. I want, you know, like a perfect spec, you know, Ram 2,500 power wagon, single cab long bed. Ideal. That's ideal, but that's not what people buy. Right. So that also makes this price bracket we're talking about 25 to 40 extremely difficult to discuss new because things have gotten so expensive. You know, I, for reference, um, what year is it? 2023? I'm just looking up some numbers. So in 2018, I bought a Forerunner TRD off-road with a couple options. It had an MSRP of like 41, and I paid like 36.5 for it because that was when you could negotiate. And right. right now, the same exact vehicle with the only change being it has like auto braking and a slightly nicer touchscreen, identical otherwise, is almost $47,000. You know, what? So 41 versus 47. So five years, it's gone up six grand and they haven't changed. Fuck all. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, we're talking difficult monetary value on the new front, but if you really want to go for the bargain stuff, you can get a new Bronco. You can get a new Wrangler. You can get a new gladiator. Um, There's, there's other stuff, you know, there's the, the RAV4 uh, adventure and also TRD off road. Um, But, for the overlander, you're probably best off in this price range. Hang on. Before I say it, I want to make sure that I actually am undercutting it. Sorry, listeners. Yeah. 39960 Subaru Outback Wilderness. That is a great overlander. Bunch of nine and a half inches of ground clearance. That's more than a Wrangler, you know, for 39 grand because a Rubicon at this point is uh pricey. Oh, oh, it's not it's not good. It's 47 to get in the door for a Rubicon. You can get a Sport S Jeep Wrangler for 37, but 47 for a Rubicon for 2024. Um and even to get into a, a good Forerunner, you're talking 41 to 45, you know, with the rear yeah. locker. So, and we're also in a big transition period. I don't know if you want to talk about this at all. New Tacoma, you know, the new yep. Colorado and Canyon have also landed. Um, what else? Well, well, wasn't problem. it last year was the new pilot? 2023 came out with a new pilot. New pilot, um, Trail Sport. Yeah. Which will probably... So there's a new pilot, Trail Sport, which is very good. But I think that's almost 50. I think that's like 48 or 49 and change. Yeah. Um, I saw one of those recently in the blue that was the press vehicle color, like the media launch color. And it looks Sonic blue, but it's like good. almost kind of grayish. Yeah, it looks good, you know. And but then if if you're gonna go like Pilot Transport, you're also talking like Nissan Cock, Nissan Rock Creek. <laughs> yep, you know. I mean, and they're available. Why not? Yeah, and then uh, Chevy just announced the Z71. What is it? not uh... the Blazer? Well, the Brave, Traverse. Brave for it. No, Traverse. Yes, the Z71 version. <laughs> New Traverse. The one we were talking be about, one of them. We were talking about that the other day with that crazy sea biller. But, um, yeah. So, so when, once the, you start to get 40 to 50, you do start to get into the lower end of Super Duties. No, 
super duty that is actually touching the earth is priced in the 40 to 50 range. Brand new. No chance. Right. No chance. We should have set more ground rules before we started this. Yeah, probably. <laughs> because like, you were, I feel like we started this going like, all right, cool, MSRP. And that now very quickly you're like, yeah, but you can't get it for that. So well, we're kind no. of uh, no, waffling no, 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 our no, no, line. No, 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 I'm, I'm not saying you can't get it. If you walk into a Ford dealer and order a vehicle, you can get it delivered eventually at that price. What I'm saying is that there are no orders being placed by dealers or by customers right. for a forty to fifty thousand dollars super duty. Because people paying people looking for that kind of vehicle aren't looking for bench front and rear seats, you know? They're not <laughs> looking for cloth. They're not looking for you know, manual mirrors and that kind of stuff. Like it, it, it's. It's the while you're in there, you know, like, yeah. OK, well, I'm going to. Mm -hmm. I need a big truck for my lifestyle, so I'm going to get an F-250 Super Duty with the what is it now? The six, seven power stroke. Sure. I literally know nothing about Super Duties. Right. So you're either <laughs> going to step up to a Tremor or an FX4 at minimum, and you're going to get, you know, bucket seats up front, and you're going to get the big screen and leather and a sunroof, and the next thing you know, it's like $77,000. But people at least in my experience and from my knowledge and reading and whatnot, there's not much of a middle ground. It's like you literally so, either buy no options or you go for it. We were, we were talking about about $45,000, right? Mm -hmm. So available near me, 2023 super duty XL long bed, Four wheel drive. Okay. Forty five thousand six hundred and twenty eight dollars. Is it a no option truck? Cloth cloth? Like I don't know. seventeen. Exactly. <laughs> it's got eleven miles on it. It's got a six point eight liter V eight gasoline. Okay. So that's the um Oh god, that what is that thing called? So it's I've got, got a great, another it's got one. A great name, uh, something Zilla. Godzilla is it Godzilla for that it's, six point eight liter V eight? It's Godzilla. That's what they call it. Yep, yep. And that was a quad cab truck too, for forty five. Okay, so uh, for comparison's sake, the all quote unquote all new Colorado ZR two. Is forty six eight. <laughs> Joel said Godzilla is a GTR, not a truck. <laughs> you are correct, Joel. You're not wrong. Uh, Joel, the Ford definitely calls their engine that too. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Joel. <laughs> um, Later tonight, I am going to watch a Godzilla movie now because uh, they're incredibly dumb, and I don't have to use my brain. Later this week, I am going to build a multiple thousand horsepower GTR on Forza Horizon 5. Okay. Not being in school means I can play Forza for like 10 minutes a day. It's great. So, yeah, this um, this price range, the 40 to 50 is... It's wild. Wild. Because it says cheap as a gladiator with effectively nothing on it and it's as nice as like a zr2 or you know upcoming ranger raptor do we know what the msrp is on that no not yet well google that tells me seen. it's 55 okay so it's 55 and it's gonna go you know for 10 over for a year but if 40 to 50 is the new 30 to 40 and right? it's it's God. It's like warfare, you know. If you so, if you go ahead, 
just using the the online listing tool that I'm using for 23 and 24 model years of pickup trucks, the filter of the price, just how far we've gone, starts at 25, and then the far right side says 150 plus. Oof. So this is just trucks near me. Um, new Maverick was 27, so that's still pretty close. Did you you haven't driven a Maverick? Did you drive it at Mama? Yeah, I drove one. I liked it. I so the Maverick and the Santa Cruz are very similar to me, um, and and like the the Santa Cruz is slightly more expensive. I or it is more expensive. It's, it's As, much more expensive. I personally liked the interior of the Santa Cruz better because the Maverick it's, that I was in felt very cheap and plasticky. The touch points were nicer. It's based on a nicer vehicle. Right. But spacious wise and other amenities, like obviously sync I'm comfortable with, but like I, the Maverick cab was great. Like, it, yeah. Um, it just, <laughs> For the price point was a little tinny. Like it didn't feel substantial enough to me. Um that's but that's good. Consistent that's great. with Ford. People are buying them like hotcakes. Yeah, there was a time where you literally couldn't get one if you wanted one. All so right. when I bring my bottom up to fifty. Yep. All kinds of pickup trucks. Yeah, let's so let's so, do let's jump to fifty to seventy five. That's a that's a price range where it's a reach, but for a lot of people, it's also attainable. So, so much money. <laughs> it's a fuck ton of money. It's more than I've yeah. ever spent on a vehicle by a lot. So now you're in Grand Cherokee land. Yeah. Uh, Grand Cherokee Trail Hawk. Yeah, Trail Hawk. Um, power Just about wagon? every Wrangler you can think of. Yes. And the trim With you the wanted in will be fifty to seventy-five, With exception of three ninety-two. Exception of three ninety-two. Yeah, four by e, any four by e you want Rubicon X, the new twenty twenty-four Rubicon X. And I think the Gladiators fit in there too. How? Gladiator. What? Any, um, any Gladiator, Mojave Rubicon Gladiator, all in there. Um, we just mentioned the. The Mojave one was the one I was thinking. I was I couldn't remember same, how much exact that would same be. Same price as the Rubicon. Your pick. Is it really? Yeah, it's deliberate. It's it's a uh, it's what version of Gladiator do you want? And the same price, which I think is great. That's the way it should be, you know. Which the Mojave one should like that's the one that has had suspension moved and different shocks and yes, you think they, it would be. They, Moved the axle forward and widened the track. Yeah, but same price. Same price, but th- I think th- the again, I think that's backwards. Really? I don't. I think, think so. they lengthened it. I don't think they shortened it. If they lengthened it, then the axle would move forwards. Or I thought the rear axle is the one that moved. Is it the no, front? The front. It's front. Oh, maybe. Oh. Uh, uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't want to. Shit. I should know this. So, according to Jeep's website, employee pricing for all gladiators $47,300 for the Mojave. And for the Rubicon. Yep. And the Overland. That's a Did- Sahara with a whole bunch of. Like it's got like full time four wheel drive and leather in places that a Jeep doesn't need. No vehicle needs leather. Who do we know who had access to a Mojave? Was it Camille? Don't Didn't he have a buddy who bought one? Still don't know. It's growing on me. But okay. So this price range, so can let's keep going. So uh power wagon? Right? Yep. Uh, None what? have come up on my searches yet, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, 60, yeah, 70 for a power wagon. Um, the 
ZR2 Silverado? Oh, yeah, that's got to be close to that. Which? The one I drove was definitely... Yeah, 70. Right about 70 for the ZR2 Silverado, which means... A Ford Expedition... What is their term level called? Timberline. Timberline, that's what it was. Don't buy that. Uh, consumer pro tip: Don't buy that. Um, <laughs> Robbie yeah, liked it. Which, in all fairness, you can also get a Z seventy one Suburban in the same price range. Which just a you can potentially get a Wagoneer down at the ferry. I say oh. it's the the bottom end of the Wagoneer line, but it's the top end of our price point yeah. right now, like high sixties. The Jeep Wagoneer starts at. 63 for the Wagoneer. Wow. We really prepared terribly. 61 for the Wagoneer to get into a base Wagoneer. Yeah. Which. <sighs> but it, so AT4 mm-hmm. Yukon Z71. Oh, it was great. AT4 Tahoe's. Yukon. The, the AT4 Yukon that I drove a couple of years ago was great it was such a good truck man i still think about that and i still think if if i could have that at4 yukon with the three liter diesel the baby max yes. oh my god that's per in my mind that is perfect even in white like the one i had was white and like oh it's great um god it's so good so what what else we have? We obviously we said ZR2 and the yep. um, AT4X Canyon. Is Ranger it, Ranger Raptor? I was to say Bronco Raptor was low seventies. Eighty three start for yours. The Bronco Raptor starts at eighty three. I know this because I've been looking at the window stick for the one I'm driving right now. Right? Yeah, but you can get a Bronco basically with every other Sasquatch and all that shit. Yeah, the one I drove was a... Easy. The one I drove was a 2022, and so it was 68.5. Okay, yeah, the Bronco Raptor now starts at a lot. 80. Yeah. A lot. That I'm going to bring it. Bronco Raptor MSRP eighty. Well, it says eighty six, but I think the one I have is starts at eighty three, and the one I am currently driving is ninety six thousand dollars. Right, because they yeah. give the fancy ones to the press people. Yeah, it's not good. Um, what else do we have in in Jeep land? You can basically get any Jeep that's not a three ninety two for under seventy five. So. Silverado ZR2 AEV Bison is 82.9. We're talking under 75 here. Right. I'm just, yeah. you had Nothing mentioned else. Silverado ZR2s. So, uh, so, well, if we're talking predictive numbers, we could d- say GX550, the new yep. Land Cruiser Prado. Land Cruisers. In the and the same thing for the uh, J250, the Land Cruiser that will have. This time next year, hopefully, right? Yeah. I mean, we should. It's a 2024, so it'll theoretically be in our hands by the spring. Um, and those are those are biggies. Those are probably. I I do think that the GX and the 250 are going to kind of steer the ship for what happens with jeep and ford and if chevy is actually even thinking about a k5 resurrection of some sort then god i hope they are i think everybody hopes i think everybody wishes that chevy could go back in time and undo putting the blazer name on what they put the blazer name on i I know a gentleman who's got like a 70 to 72 k5 and there's part of my brain that's always like I need to get a hold of that. Yeah, they're extremely timeless vehicles. Yeah, it's such a good look. You know what's not timeless? 
the current blazer. <laughs> I can't even picture it in my own head. It's, it's, yeah, that is, and that's the problem. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, okay, so to not, you know, dunk on Chevy or anything, but I think the, the 250 Land Cruiser and the GX 550, the reception, the reliability, and the actual in cultural off road impact of these will have some bearing on where the the Bronco, the Wrangler, any prospective K5 quote-unquote blazer resurrection goes. Um, and, you know, we haven't had any conclusive decision on where the Forerunner goes. Right. That'll be you coming know? up. Right. So... No, you're good. I was going to move us on. No, I was just going to say, I, I think that the Forerunner will be based on the Tacoma platform, and the Tacoma is going to be in this 50 to 75 range for the TRD Pro, the Trail Hunter, um, the, yeah. you know, those psychotic suspension seats are going to be five grand in of themselves. I'm willing <laughs> to bet you that I've owned five vehicles that cost less than those seats alone. Probably. So, if the Forerunner is on the Tacoma platform, we have a couple of interesting things. First of all, there's still a manual transmission Tacoma. Yep. Bronco, for the first time ever, there's a Bronco and a Wrangler concurrent with a Tacoma that will, or the first time since 1994 that we could see a manual transmission forerunner. This, that, this is where I'm not good as a car guy because I could give two shits about a manual transmission anything. I just, I just um, don't care anymore. I, I care conception like on a, on a premise i, I don't want to drive them <laughs> no no and like the manual jeep is worse than the auto jeep and the manual bronco is worse than the auto bronco and it's great yep. that they exist and i want them to exist and i'll always be happy that they exist right i'd rather have the auto personally right. because off-roading the manual transmission this is total sacrilege but it's fucking terrible if you're like just like leaning on the clutch rock crawling. It's it's terrible. Um, Dude, that was my, my 2004 TJ. Yeah. It was a manual transmission Jeep. And it was so much fun in the sand and whatever, but like rush hour traffic jam in Orlando for a solid hour, popping the clutch every three to 10 seconds. It's miserable. Well, you could just <laughs> say Orlando. And miserable be the blanket statement. <laughs> right. I hate it. Guess Dude, I my kid asked, when is the Cybertruck coming to dealers on our YouTube stream? And I want to throw something at him now. <laughs> you would be forgiven. There would be no CPS uh, repercussions if you did throw something at him. Yeah, there would. Um, um, which kid? <laughs> which, which kid? It's, it, it's 2.0. <laughs> it's a second um, one. He'll probably be in college. Dude, I think they're shipping now. I keep seeing trucks with them. Bullshit. Are you have you not? Oh my gosh, where have I been seeing these things? Uh, um, the Tesla Facebook pages? No, no. They're... It's actual like news people I've seen taking pictures with cyber trucks on like delivery vehicles. I haven't seen any of this given I don't actively avoid the media is but right i and i mean finding a reliable news source right now is not super handy for what i searched um it's probably the least important thing in the news in the world right now right War, john we love it fire 
John asked, what do you think of the 2024 Land Cruiser Prado Hybrid coming to the States? We love it. <laughs> Super fan. Um, yeah. I mean, we haven't driven it. We haven't seen it. We haven't touched it. We haven't been in the same room as it. Uh, but coming but, in at 55K potentially is just wild. Yeah. 55 for something that gets... So, also, this was in, this was in the off-road news this week. Toyota had the... There was something on the website that said 27 miles per gallon projected, and they took that down. Okay. But still, if it gets 21 combined, right? Or 20. Right. If it gets 20 miles per gallon combined on regular gas, the outgoing Land Cruiser, I had a Heritage Edition for a week, and I got like, I don't think I got 13. You know, so right. if we can see 20 and have the off-road capability of something. You say it was listed at 27? That, so Toyota had on their website 27 combined. Ross, they, I would place a deposit immediately if that's actually even close to true. Dude, you don't have to convince me. If, if they had 27 combined and the reliability was 90% of what it is on the you know, the 460s, the 470s, and and the 200s and whatnot, I'd be on board too. But they apparently pulled that number and that block of copy from the website. So, so it's kind of like, he, a, was it a misprint? Because right. it could be 17, you know, because the GX550. Right. If it's is, 17, that's... It's atrocious. Like, this can't, like well, just give us a V8 back. Like, <laughs> so, all right. So the, this was also uh, a big point of contention because the GX550, they said average is 17. And I but got is that the twin turbo V6 version? Uh, the 550 is only the twin turbo V6. Right. So the hybrid four-cylinder Land Cruiser is going to get the... It better get better than 17. Given the tire so size here's, on the... Go ahead. Here's where my brain goes on this is, and I can't remember which car magazine had it, but one of them had a long-term Toyota Sienna minivan, mm -hmm. all-wheel drive, four-cylinder mm -hmm. hybrid, right? Yep. Not the most aerodynamic shape, but it's not terrible. There's worse. And over the year, combined in an all-wheel drive van... It was 32.9 miles to the gallon. That's great. So, Unregular. And that's... I'm, I'm probably 87, which is really 85. Right. 87 you know, octane. And through yeah. multiple journalists testing, <laughs> using it family road trips, whatever, throughout the year. 32.9. calculated, not computer indicated. That's great right. fuel economy. So, but they were $55,000. At the time, yeah. I'm like, that's a lot of money yeah. for a Sienna minivan. I don't want to spend $55,000 on a minivan. We were, we were talking about you looking for a hybrid Sienna. Right. But if I can get a Land Cruiser with a turbo four-cylinder hybrid, I'm getting the powertrain I want. I'm getting the drive system mm -hmm. I want. I'm getting the name I want for the same price point and, and potentially 27 miles to the gallon. Homie, I don't buy new vehicles. I'd be finding a way to place an order. Yeah, it, it's a it's a wait and see, you know. And God, it better be that good. I don't think it will be. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, also, the new Tundra hybrid a lot, and there was an article about this on Car and Driver today, a lot of people are getting worse gas mileage um, by a fair margin. And, you know, the EPA cycle is an idealized cycle. And right. Most vehicles get worse than the EPA rating, and there have been plenty of class action lawsuits about this. And there's an, <laughs> miles per gallon. <laughs> there's a Tesla class action lawsuit about this right now, even though it's, you know, battery is, juices. Was that um, the is that the thing that you and Emmy were talking about? The dis, was it discretion department or something like? Diversion department. Diversion department. That's yeah. What it where, was. where they're say where people are getting into their car and it says and these numbers are 
hypothetical is as 350 miles uh you know to depletion and then they drive 150 miles and when they get there with 150 miles left it only says 75 then it says presently says like oh you only have 75 and there actually is less late less range than tesla said there should and would be um but that's beside the point i don't i don't think the land cruiser is getting 27 i think that was a drastic a drastic 22 would be great dude 22 again i like the and combined driving, like if we're talking like real world city driving twenty two, man. Given I, I most of my GX driving is in city, um, yeah. But even on even on trips, I'm happy when I average fifteen or sixteen. You know, on trips, oh, I'd be yeah. pissed on a trip if that's what I was getting. Yeah. <laughs> Big tires and you know heavy yeah. truck and and like realistically, like I don't highway it almost ever except for like literally going to take it into the woods um well that's where the the suburban gets like 13 to 15 around town yeah and then when you get to the highway you could potentially see 17 18 is a piece of cake 19 20 and i've seen 22 for a brief amount of time that's downhill where, with the wind behind me that's a, a, a cylinder deactivation truck right yes yeah those are GM figured that shit out, like with the actual gearing and whatnot on those heavy trucks. Like you can pull out pretty good mileage on those things. I you it doesn't deactivate when you're at normal modern highway speeds now. Um seventy, hmm. seventy five, eighty, it almost never like it's only on like a, a true long downhill. Really? Yeah. It's staying I, in the gear. So like a lot of the GM eight cylinder trucks I've tested shut off four cylinders. Like when I'm just cr- like cruising, not cruise control. I don't like cruise control to use it, but normal highway driving at, at a 72 mile per hour flat, it'll shut off four cylinders. Yeah, it's just never flat here and it's hmm. windy as shit. So <laughs> the, I think probably the wind. Probably yeah. The wind. You're always pushing um, also, some kind of sale. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk seventy-five to hundred, and then we should probably call it. So, for, speaking of I went all the way up to ninety. <laughs> speaking <laughs> like, of um, speaking of air conditioning, I've been spending time with this Bronco Raptor, and when it does the uh, what's it called? Automatic shut off at a stoplight. What is that called? Stop start. Uh, start stop. Yeah. Start stop, stop. Stop start. When it does <laughs> that at a stoplight. The air conditioning basically turns to heat. Yeah. And I know Ford is not going to be happy hearing me say this, um, but I don't want to, you know, call. I, like, I'm calling it the way it is. Like, the AC set at 70 or 68 degrees when I come to a stoplight and it shuts the engine off and the AC is still going, is fucking blowing heat, which is not <laughs> great. Um, but, that's more, I always turn that button off because like whatever oh. rental car I'm in that has it, luckily the Suburban doesn't have it, but like, um, and everything else I own is too old to have it. But. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, we don't have one yeah. that has it. But yeah, no, I usually turn it off if I'm, you know, spending like a lot of time or a long time, but around town, like there's no reason to shut it off. So anyways, Bronco Raptor falls into this price range. It starts at 83 or 85 or something. Um, the one I've been testing is 96. And Jesus. this is literally overlapping with the Wrangler 392 that I was testing, which I should have had this open, and I'm a terrible person for not having podcast material ready. But in my defense, I had one computer side didn't want to be part of the podcast tonight. And now I am going to my second Gmail account of the hour. <laughs> oh, fuck. Are you fucking kidding me? God, my internet and my computers today are just... This is what happens when you have two computers. The computer I'm recording on right now is uh, from 2013. 
And the computer that I was trying to record on is from, I think, 2017. So, so slightly better. Less bad. Less bad, yeah. My newest computer graduated high school um, only like a year and a half into Trump's first and only hopeful term. Anyways, before we derail this, but we can ask him quickly. Yeah, you're Wrangler on there, 392, buddy. <laughs> base price of the Wrangler 392, that was 87.6, and the one that I tested was 95.9, which God. is $300 less than the Bronco Raptor that is parked in my driveway right now. Um, and obviously, the two exist for very different purposes. You don't buy a Bronco Raptor at the same width as a Hummer H1 for tight, narrow, you know, woods crawling. And you don't buy a Jeep 392 for high-speed Baja stuff. You know, they are different vehicles for different end goals. Um, Both have their merits. I think in a day-to-day world where the actual off-road capability isn't a factor and you're just using it as your, you know, around down vehicle, um, like dropping off child at daycare, as I did, uh, the Wrangler feels more premium. And also, and I said this to my wife, who literally is an ear doctor and, you know, Multiple people in my world who are deeply invested in the music industry. Um, But the difference between the Jeep 392 and the Bronco Raptor really gave me an appreciation for how much emphasis I put on the sound and the audio and the noise experience of a vehicle you know the um the 64 the 392 in the jeep with the way the exhaust is routed on this thing it it's i i think that's the best the 392 has ever sounded and the bronco the 3 liter um forced induction the turbo v6 it's a V6, right? Not a yeah. It's a V6, not a yes. Um, the best sound that it makes is it does a little turbo whooshy noise, um, but otherwise, the best noise it makes is when it's off. <laughs> but it's you know they're not they're not it's not fair to compare them. They're not from no. the same like. It's fair to compare them because the realistically like ninety fucking five percent of them will never touch dirt. Yep. But they're not it's like comparing a freaking, you know Hellcat and like you know, uh, 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 GT3, like they have decided or scratch that a ZL1 1LE and a GT3. You know, they have really different purposes for being, yeah. um, but yeah, I don't want to let's call it there on talking about those. Okay, the, la- the last ones at the peak for me are just Raptor R and TRX. Yeah, I mean, we're talking hundred grand plus. After a hundred grand for your factory off roaders, you're really talking yeah. Raptor R, T R X, G wagon. Um, <laughs> that's really it. There's really not much else to uh, to get. It. We, oh, we didn't talk. Uh, Ineos Grenadier, 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 
I don't know how to say that word. Well, that exists in the press bracket we just talked about. Well, let's skip that. So it's um, like upper 70s to 80s? I think it starts around 80. And it's, a, it's the... Uh, it's the B fifty eight BMW engine, but I don't want that. I've never. <laughs> I mean, great engine, actually, really deeply reliable engine. But have fun with your dealer experience because there is no dealer to have an experience at. Um, yep. Raptor R versus T Rex. Did you drive both? Yeah, I did. I haven't driven TRX off road again, like particular environments. Um, my only TRX experience was on tiny roads in Wisconsin, and then that Ford stood trail that have they've shared that video so many times. That truck does not yeah. belong there. Um, <laughs> and then Raptor R was similar place, but there was more opportunity to uh kind of open it up there. Um, I I prefer the Raptor R because I don't need a constant supercharged line. The Raptor R to me is a little more understated. Yeah, um, the um, the blower one and the TRX is the most offensive of any Hellcat product. Yeah, it's awesome, and I'm glad it exists for some people, but it's not my cup of tea. So, it's that being said i'm gonna want blow off noise if i get a land cruiser with the turbo oh yeah 100 <laughs> <100%. laughs> right like just a huge wastegate on it oh my yeah. god dude it's gonna be like the fucking one and two jz trucks that people have swapped overseas except i love that like stuff 300 horsepower less <laughs> But yeah, the Raptor R and the and the TRX R, and I, I literally go go on Hooniverse.com and read my review of the Raptor R. I just it just went up recently, and they are two completely different trucks. Like yep, the Raptor R, the TRX is just like the heavyweight, like fuck you in your face, always. Well, that's not good. My uh, my Mac charger just fell out, and it is almost <laughs> untouchably hot. So, I'm gonna pretend that that didn't happen. Also, you can see my. We can wrap this up soon, just so. My, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the so you TRX, don't start a fire. The TRX is a heavyweight. It's just always pissed off, and it's always blower on, and it feels heavy. Did you realize that it always feels heavy? Everything yeah. about it is heavy. Um, the Raptor R is like playful almost comparatively, and it has two wheel drive, which the TRX doesn't. Which, yeah, I between the two, I like, can't afford either one, but I, I would lean Raptor R. Uh, both were, and you're gonna laugh because housing prices, but both were more than the down payment of my house. <laughs> Mine too. You said more than, right? Yeah, more than. Yeah, it was more than mine too. <laughs> by by a uh, factor of how much is the, Yeah, yours is, is way it. closer to the actual price of them than mine was. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's where the joke comes in. Kenny. Sorry, you left me a dad joke opening there. <laughs> that's like a technicality. <laughs> Hi down payment, I'm dad. Oh. oh. All right. We've gone quite a while, and I know Joel stuck with us for a while too. And Joel clearly, Slater. I need to talk to my yeah, I need to talk to my kid who's talking to me in the comments of our, our YouTube video. He's still asking Cybertruck questions. <laughs> no, I'm sure that was his uncle who he's with right now. Bust my chops oh, yeah. too. Um, tell he knows Joel I can't stand that stuff. To, uh, well, you need to tell Joel. Joel can hear me. I was going to say you can tell Joel. <laughs> Joel, let's. I know we're a day apart, but let's record a show. He said, still here. Yeah. Joel, I'm going to send you an email. We're going to talk. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, I yeah. will get a, I'll wrap I, up the show. I'll get a, we'll, we'll drink Foster's together. I don't think Joel will appreciate that. <laughs> That's I the that... Americanized version of Australia beer, or Australian beer. That's not good because it's 
fucking terrible. And I say that lovingly. <laughs> said, Please no. <laughs> I, I say that lovingly, Joel. We love you. Foster's is horrendous. Uh, that's like when my parents went to um, Ireland and they were like, oh, everyone just drinks Guinness, right? And they were like, no, all the teenagers drink like Bud Light and Miller Light and whatever because they want to act like they're in America even though they're in Ireland. So, like, did you see the pictures? And even then, like, yeah, just Smithix, just, yeah. The pictures of Kid Rock <laughs> drinking Bud Light Tall Boys. Oh my God. Was that like, recent? Like, within the last few days, he put out oh, this whole big funny. thing about, you know, anti Bud Light because Bud Light, because Budweiser yeah. did all that pro. Any, you know, you know where I'm going. Yep, Joel. Welcome to American politics, and and uh, uh, I'm sure he's aware. <laughs> oh, all right, I'll wrap the okay. show. It's Reese Week, um, by the way. It's what? Race Week. What week? Race Week. Race Week. I this one is back. I was hearing you say Grease Week, and I was like, "They're in Belgium. What are you talking about?" Well, if you're in Greece, the it's always Greece. The Netherlands. It's always Grease Week if you're in Greece. Well, I went. I went. It's hot as fuck here. I've been super greasy. So, <laughs> uh, I like how Joel gave me no sympathy too. I even did the non-U.S. version of the temp chart. He goes, "Yeah, that's like summer down here," and I was like, "God yeah. damn it, Joel." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Love you, like, buddy. It's winter um, down there, and it's basically the same time. I lost my show notes that I was going to close the show with. So, um, you know how it goes. Follow the universe on Instagram. Um, you can read what Ross writes on the website. I haven't written anything in months other than posting podcast episodes. Uh, Ross is no, not like the one from Friends, and I'm at Overly Dad. And we do the show. Yep. Thanks, Joel. Thank Thanks, Ross. Thanks, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> I always thank the guests. And I was like, who am I going to thank? It's just for Ross and me. Thanks, Ross. I know. Yeah. Oh, man. Um,